So Jacob, or Yaakov, if you're in Israel, he prophesies over each one of his sons, his 12 sons, which become the patriarchs, the 12 tribes of Israel. And he's showing us what happens in Israeli history with the tribes. It's amazing. Let's dive right in. Hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to hit that button and the bell. We're doing a series right now, Jesus in the Old Testament. You won't miss anything. Check out the former videos as well, the, the last ones, and comment with your questions or any comments. I love to respond to those, and I love to see them. So let's get into this presentation, you guys, into it. Here we are. So then Jacob summoned his sons, and he said, Assemble yourselves so that I may tell you... What will be happen to you in the days to come? So he's speaking about their tribes, the history of what's going to happen, but it's also their personalities. It's really interesting how that works. Gather together and listen, sons of Jacob. Yes, listen to Israel, your father. So we know that Yaakov or Jacob meant heel catcher or it could be deceiver, right? But then Israel, when his name was changed to Israel, it means governed by God. It's beautiful. And then he starts with Reuben, his firstborn. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. Uncontrollable as water. Uh-oh. You shall not have preeminence because you went up to your father's bed. Remember the concubine? Remember that? And then you defiled it, and he went up to my couch. Then he goes into Simeon, the tribe of Simeon and Levi. They are brothers. Their swords are implements of violence. May my soul not enter into their council. May my glory not be united with their assembly, for in their anger they killed men, and in their self-will they lamed oxen. Wow. Yeah, that's not such a, a good uh, uh, history for them that's coming. It's, it's like his story. God, that's how I look at history. It's God's story, but he's telling them what will happen. Now, God still loves each one of these guys, even if they're, they've got a prophecy that says there's going to be some bad things. Because we all, every person in this world, every family has bad things. Otherwise, God wouldn't save anybody, right? So let's keep going with this. So then he says, Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will scatter them in Jacob and disperse them among Israel. So they were absorbed into the other tribes of Israel. You know that, right? They didn't have their own territory. They were a part of Judah's territory, I believe. So let's keep going. As for you, Judah, whoa, something shifts here. Watch this, you guys. This is where the Messiah comes from, his lineage, right? As for you, Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Now, did they literally praise Judah? No, he's speaking about his line, which is where we get Yeshua HaMashiach, and through the line of David, all the way down, and then through who this man named uh, Joseph, who was like his stepdad, he wasn't even his real blood father, yet he was of the tribe of Judah. But it's amazing because Joseph had a dad named Jacob. So it's like Jacob begot Joseph and Joseph, the father or stepfather actually of Jesus, of Yeshua. But through Mary, Miriam, right? She was through the line of Judah, through the line of David, and through Nathan, not through the line of Solomon, but through Nathan, because Solomon's line ended up becoming cursed. Remember that? So this is beautiful. This is so good, you guys. But it says that your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies, and your father's sons shall bow down to you. Judah is a lion's cub, and from the prey, my son, you have gone up. He crouches, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion, who dares to stir him up? Remember Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, he's called the lion of the tribe of Judah. That speaks of the Messiah, right? Isn't that beautiful? So this, this is a prophetic prophecy that Yaakov or Israel is giving to his sons right now. And then it says here, the scepter shall not or will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. That means the right to do judicial, uh, to judge his people. And that's what the tribe of Judah did. They did the judicial punishment when needed and uh, governed the people, right? 
So the ruler's staff from between his feet until what? Shiloh comes. Until Shiloh comes, what's that mean? Shiloh means the Messiah. Until the Messiah comes, you guys. So let's read that again. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, from the tribe of Judah, right? Nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Now, we got to stop right there because... Right around the first part of the century A.D., right, after the the year of our Lord, after the birth of Jesus, Josephus, the Jewish historian who worked for the Romans, right, he recorded that the Sanhedrin, right, the elders, the religious leaders of Jerusalem, of the temple, were out and about in the streets of Jerusalem wearing sackcloth and ashes and weeping and yelling and weeping and crying, saying that, and they were quoting that scripture, you guys, this one right here, the scepter has, not will not, but has departed from Judah, but Shiloh has not come. This is what they were yelling out in the streets of Jerusalem, recorded by Josephus. Well, can you imagine little Yeshua, possibly, maybe 12, maybe 17 years old, perhaps, looking around the corner in Jerusalem when they were visiting and watching them do that, he could have shook his head and said, no, I have come. (laughs) Wow, that's powerful, right? That's why I love going into the Old Testament, you guys, because we can look at stuff like this and and it's mind-blowing that God gives us all of that in these scriptures. All right, let's continue on. And Israel goes on about his boys here, and he says, continuing in Judah, he ties his fowl, this speaks of what Jesus did with the donkey, right? To the vine, and his donkey's colt to the choice vine, he washes his garments in wine, and his robes in the blood of the grapes. This is powerful right here, because this is what we see in the book of Revelation, where in chapter 1, John sees him in a robe down to his ankles, and it's covered and stained in the blood of the wrath of God, the grapes of the wrath of God. This is amazing, you guys. And then it says, His eyes are dull from wine. His teeth are white from milk. And then it goes into Zebulun here. So that was a powerful, powerful description of Judah, the tribe of Judah being the tribe where the Messiah would be birthed from, which is exactly what Jesus did. If you have doubts about it, go into Matthew and read his genealogy record of, he has it of Joseph and of Mary, but primarily it's Mary because she's the full blood line of Jesus. It's so good. All right, let's get back into it. So Zebulun, the next, the next one on the list here that is getting prophesied over by his father Jacob. Zebulun will reside will reside at the seashore, and he shall be a harbor for ships, and his flank shall be towed, uh, I'm sorry, toward Sidon. So Zebulun, right, was way up there in the uh, north, uh, the northwest corner of Israel where there were these ports and ships, and they were sailors. And then we also see here Issachar. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between the sheepfolds. And when he saw that a resting place was good and that the land was pleasant, he bowed his shoulder to carry the burdens, and he became a slave at forced labor. So this actually did happen with the tribe uh, of Issachar. And then Dan, Dan shall judge his people. As one of the tribes of Israel, Dan shall be a serpent. That's kind of strange in a way, right? A serpent in the way, a horned viper in the path that bites the horse's heels so that its rider falls backward. And then it says here, for your salvation, I wait, Lord. And then as he goes into Gad, as for Gad, a band of raiders shall attack him, but he will attack at their heels. And then this is a good one because my friend's son's name is Asher, and I always loved his name because it means happy, right? And uh, he is a happy kid. And my friend Caleb has named him that. And my, it's funny, too, because my friend Caleb, I love him so much. Hey, Caleb, for watching. Love you, bro. He's my best friend. Anyway, he is Jewish by blood. 
and um, but he's a strong, strong believer. And his dad was saved through the Calvary Chapel movement, you know, the whole Jesus Revolution movement, same as my family. And him and I have this connection through that. We love that Jesus Revolution movie, the hippies getting saved. It speaks of speaks of what his dad did, and his dad led him to go to Calvary Chapel and get saved too. And then uh, it, it's beautiful. It's the same picture. So he named his one of his sons Asher, not even knowing what it meant. Later, I got to tell him, hey, it means happy. And his son is so happy. But anyway, let's get back <laughs> into it here. All right. As for Asher, his food shall be rich, and he shall yield royal delicacies. And then it goes into Naphtali. Naphtali is a doe let loose, and he utters beautiful words. What a nice prophecy for Naphtali. Now we're getting into my favorite character, Joseph, or Yosef, if you're in Israel, right? Yosef. And by the way, I'm doing a, a series right now. You can click on this right up here, and you will get into the series, the playlist on how to find Jesus in the Old Testament. Right now, we're in Joseph, and Joseph is a powerful picture of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, right? So powerful. It, it'll blow your mind. So yeah, click on that and check it out. And don't forget to subscribe if you like this. If you want to go through the whole Bible and see where the Messiah is found in the Old Testament, where Jesus is found, this is the channel for you. Hit that bell, hit the subscribe button and the bell. You won't miss anything. All right, let's get on with it. Here we are in Joseph, Yaakov or Jacob, your Israel is prophesying over Joseph. And I believe that this is a picture of the millennial kingdom of the Messiah where he rules and reigns from Jerusalem and makes the world new and bright again. But it's interesting to me because Judah wasn't the only one who got a messianic prophecy. Joseph did too. And there's an interesting tie to this in the book of Joshua, or actually it might even be in Numbers, where, where uh, Moses sends out the spies and only two came back with a good report, right? It was Yeshua or Joshua and Caleb. Those were the two who were the, the good that came back with a good report, and they lived a long life, and they got to go into the promised land. Well, Joshua is of the tribe of, or the house of Joseph, right? Of the tribe of Ephraim, which is, you know, Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, but he was, they call it the house of Joseph. That's where Joshua, or Yeshua, is from. And he was able to lead the people into the promised land. His name is Yeshua. Interesting, right? And Moses wasn't, and Moses representing the law, wasn't able to lead them into the promised land, but Yeshua was. You see the picture? And then Caleb, right, of the tribe of Judah, he was a strong man of God as well. So we're seeing a picture in those two tribes, the tribe of Judah, the tribe of, or the house of Joseph or Yosef. And that's what we're seeing in these scriptures. Let's go back to it here real quick. So Joseph is a fruitful branch, a fruitful branch by a spring, and its branches run, hang over a wall. So beautiful. I have a big apple tree in my backyard, and it just, just blasts out these big, juicy, sweet, beautiful apples. And some of the branches hang over into my neighbor's yard. And I told them, hey, feel free to grab some of that fruit and eat it, my friend. But that's the picture of Joseph, right? He goes over the walls and his fruit, he was so fruitful for what he did. In fact, his name, I think uh, Ephraim, the son Ephraim, he named fruitful. And Joseph means the doubled amount or double the fruit, right? Isn't that great? Okay, so a fruitful branch by a spring, its branches hang over a wall. The archers provoked him and shot at him and were hostile right? Hostile toward him. Joseph had lots of hostility, and so did Jesus. Huge picture of Jesus in this. But his bow remained firm, and his arms were agile. And from the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The shepherd, the stone of Israel? What does that speak of? Remember Jesus said he referred to himself as the stone which the builders the builders had rejected became the chief cornerstone? It speaks of the Messiah, my friend. The chief cornerstone, the stone that the builders rejected, 
the stone of Israel, as we just saw in that prophecy about Joseph, the, the shepherd, the stone of Israel, that speaks of the Messiah, you guys. And there's an old Jewish story about Solomon's temple when it was being built. Remember, they didn't construct anything or do any labor on the Temple Mount where the temple was erected. They just put it all together. There was no chisel and hammer sound there. God told them not to do that. So they had a quarry that was far away, a rock quarry, where they were getting these big, beautiful stones made. They were placed in this beautiful temple, Solomon's temple. But the first one that was brought out, according to legend in Jewish history, is that and they brought out this stone to the builders that were up on the Temple Mount ready to erect this temple. They didn't recognize it the first time. They didn't know what it was because it was not carved out, not chiseled out with human hands. And so they just said, what's this? They, it was in their way when they started building, so they rolled it over the hill, ended up in the bushes on that mountain, Mount Moriah, right? Kind of like ties in with Genesis 22 where they found a ram caught in the thicket by its horns, right? The stone that the builders rejected was in the thicket because they erected the other stones and they put it all together and they sent word back to the rock quarry to the, he's like, they're like the stone masons, the workers, right? And they said, hey, where's that chief cornerstone? We're missing the chief cornerstone. They said, we sent that up to you first a long time ago. Well, they rejected it. Then they realized that was the chief cornerstone. They went down and got it and placed it in its rightful spot in the temple when it was finished. Do you see the picture? That's the picture of the Messiah, you guys, the chief cornerstone. And here we're seeing it in, in Jacob's prophecy, from there is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. And then it continues, from the God, Joseph gets a huge Huge amount of prophecy. I think the most out of all of them in this. Maybe not J uh, Judah, but pretty, I mean, gets a lot. Just like Joseph takes up 25% or one-fourth of the book of Genesis. That is huge, my friend. That's like getting your four-year degree in ancient history, but spending your final year, your senior year, on one man. And that would be Joseph. God did that for a reason. He gave that much of the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, Bereshit, if you're in Israel, gave that much to Joseph because he was trying to show us he was a picture of the Messiah. All right? All right, let's continue. So Joseph gets this huge prophecy from the God of your father who helps you and the, mighty, the Almighty who blesses you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lies beneath, and blessings of the breasts and of the womb, the blessings of your father have surpassed the blessings of my ancestors up to the furthest boundary, like heaven, right? Of the everlasting hills. Wow. May they be on the head of Yosef or Joseph and on the top of the head of the one distinguished among his brothers. Speaks of Jesus all the way, you guys. And then it goes in, J Jacob goes into Benjamin. And he says, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning, he devours the prey. And in the evening, he divides the spoils. And so all these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father said of them when he blessed them. And he blessed them, every one of them, the blessing appropriate to him. That is it, guys. That's Jacob or Yaakov's prophecy over the 12 tribes, the 12 patriarchs of Israel, the very beginnings, and it shows us a picture of Israeli history. And what's even better is that in the book of Revelation, not the first book of the Bible, but the last book, we see a picture, I believe, of church history where Jesus himself gives seven letters to the seven churches, these primarily Gentile churches, and he tells what, through what he says, church history. It's amazing. And we're going to get into that when we go through the book of Revelation in the future, and I can't wait to do that with you guys. Hey, don't forget to hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament. You're going to see so much of this kind of stuff, and uh, it's going to bless your heart. I know it. I love you guys. God bless you.